Well, welcome to a new Dave's Classic Garage Tours video. And in this one, we're back at the Healy factory where we actually get to see some Healy's. This is one of our wide bodied Healy's. So it's four inches wider than a standard car. Right. Austin Healy's to be precise, plus a pre-facelift Triumph TR3. So if British sports cars are your thing, stick around to find out more. All right, Chris, well, first up, uh, what have we got here? I suppose the uh, company name is um, the Healy factory. We've yep. got, to so kick we, off we, we've got a fairly special car here. This is one of our wide bodied Healy's. So it's four inches wider than a standard car. Right. And then there's all the changes that we've made along the way. Um, okay, so it came out of the factory four inches wide? No, no, oh, right, no, okay. this is something that we've been doing for our ourselves and our customers. Oh, okay. So we've put the width into the car here. Yeah. So what you've got on the front of the car, you've got an aluminium um, front shroud and a steel guard. Gotcha. We then put an inch into each side of it. Okay. And that gives us an overall distance of four inches wider, move the doors out, so we keep the line of the car. So was, this was a, com a complaint by owners that they, they, they weren't No, no, this just... was just something that we oh, right. saw and we thought yeah. we could go down that avenue. Austin Healey did actually build their own version of a wide body car called the 4000. There was three that they made, two automatics, one manual, um, and they were actually six inches wider, so wider car than what we've been developing. Okay. And it was done right down the centre of the car. Uh -huh. And they had the Rolls-Royce engine in. Um, wow. And you say that one of those is in Australia now, yeah? Yeah, there's one living in Australia now, yeah. yeah. And did that go through the Healy factory? Yeah, yeah, we did a total restoration to the car as well, yeah. We're going for the for the width, but we've gone around it in a completely different manner than yeah. the factory did. And is this the first attempt? No, no, we've most probably done at least half a dozen, possibly more if I looked up the numbers. Oh, well. oh okay. Yeah. Wow. So... You, the, uh, the Healy factory is known for this job? Uh, yes, for, yes, yeah. yeah. Pe people in the Healy, in the Healy fraternity sure. know all about uh, yeah. the, the modifications that we do. Oh, wow. Gosh, it's just... So a, as, a, as a standard oh. car, you see, it wouldn't have had the stainless steel firewall. Right. No. <laughs> um, but we've put a stainless steel firewall on. We've covered the foot boxes in polished stainless. And we've put lots of um, heat um, reducing products behind it to try and stop the inside of the car getting so hot. Yeah. They are known to get really hot. Right. Um, so we're trying to reduce that as well. Yeah. Also, yeah. it gives us the opportunity with a, a really nice clean bulkhead that we can put the wire in on the inside of the car and leave a really clean engine bay. Understood, understood. And are these uh, the ones you've made, are they are they all stayed in Australia or have they gone overseas? Oh, there's there's... One that we built for a chap in um, in Norway. Yeah. Um, I think the other ones will all still be in Australia at the moment, uh -huh. but uh, I'd have to check as people move around a bit. You know the owners. Yeah. And what other mod modifications are? So we've made it four inches wider. It's going to get seven inch wide wheels on the front, eight inch on the back, uh -huh. and they're going to be they're in the in the corner. They're in a um, a black wire wheel. Oh yeah. Um, rack and pinion steering, uh -huh. uh, bigger brakes, yeah. corny suspension front and rear. Wow, oh um, my lord. It's also got uh, limited mm. slip diff with a quaff centre. Um, it's going to have a straight cut five speed gearbox. And in the engine, we've, we've developed our. The gearbox from what? what off off Austin Healy. Oh, right. But okay. a straight cut gearbox. Okay. So it'll sound fantastic while you're going through the gears. Yeah. Uh, we've we've developed our own aluminium blocks over the years, so we get rid of the cast iron block, uh, producing a, a complete aluminium engine with head and block. Uh, this car is going to be 3.8 liters with triple Webers, but we can go up to 4.4 in the same block as well. Wow. I bet she sounds fantastic, huh? I just, yeah, the paintwork is just to die for. But the rally... I know you're worried about a little bit of dust, but I can assure you it shines through. <laughs> yeah, we've uh, put the rally uh, vents in the sides of the guard. Yeah. Uh, removes a little bit of heat, but also it, it adds to the look of the car. Yeah. There's going to be no bumpers on the car. 
and we've gone for the really large flip top um, petrol cap on the back um, long range aluminium fuel tanks being made for the car yeah um, because it's going to have the Webers on, she's going to drink drink fairly uh, thirstily. <laughs> yeah. And what do the purists say, uh, Chris? Oh, they, they can they can appreciate the quality and and what's gone into the car, but the purists still really like sure. the basic That's why car. The purists, but so. but there there is a there is a, a a lot of people out there want to drive the cars, go touring in their cars. Mm and really appreciate the cars and not just go to a car show and park up. Right, yeah. And do you reckon, is that a, uh, it's a newfound thing that they you know, want to be more usable now that uh, these cars, they're realizing They've it's... always been used. Uh, mm. I mean, next year we've got um, 12 cars leaving from Australia again and going to Norway. They're going to the European meet wow. in Norway. Um, and then the customers will also drive the cars around Europe for around six or seven weeks, put them back in the containers and ship them back. So these cars move all the way around the world. Yeah. Um, in, in, in past years, I've been to America, um, England, Europe. Um, so they, they, they get used wildly. And then all over Australia as well. <laughs> Enough of these built for them, you know, for these modification cars 
to you know yeah. to be allowed to be out you know, they shouldn't worry well, too the, much the, these. usually the modified cars cars like this or even with a v8 in because we've done quite a few of these with v8 motors in as well yeah. um Modern ones? Or, 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 no, what, they, we what usually put? put a Ford Windsor in, um, right, yeah. you know, with a single Holly or, or quad, yeah. um, quad Webbers, depending on what the customer would want, yeah. with Tremec five-speed gearboxes. Right. Um, it just depends on the customers. They, they, they yeah. see what we can do, and then they go, can I have, can I have, can I have? And you, you can have anything you want. It's, yeah. it's just time, effort, and money. Sure. Uh, I can't wait to see this one up and running. That's, uh, well, how long's left on this? Oh, I'm just waiting for the last of the machine work to the engine block. We can drop the an engine and gearbox in it. Then it, it's put the wiring loom in, and then they can go to the local trimmer and have an interior right. done for the car. Yeah. So still some time off yet before she'd... Oh, look, in the, in the perfect world, it, it would only be a couple of months, but it's mostly <laughs> going, going to go on for six or eight months. Yeah. You know. oh, it's spectacular the work you've done anyway. So uh, a bit more standard, this one. Than the, yeah, so the what we've one. got here is, uh, is, is sort of classified as the end of the Healy range. So it's a twin big light. Uh, BJ8 is the model, Austin Healy, three liter. Um, wind up window car. So these were coming to the end of the lifespan of the Austin Healy. So this was the last of the models that they produced. Uh -huh. So it had the uh, pram style um, soft top on the car that folded down and when it was down you could still see some of it on the outside of the car right earlier cars had the removable frames that you put inside the car and, and kept a cleaner line on the yeah. cars oh my god look at the interior on that so this has just come back from the trimmer Jeez. so we just had a new interior fitted in the car it's crazy this crazy. this car's sort of been um a bit of a team effort between myself and the owner. The owner has his own panel shop in South Australia, uh -huh. and he pulled the car apart 14 years ago. He then gave the body and the panels to his staff to restore the metalwork. They became unstuck fairly quickly and couldn't do it. Um, they just didn't have the knowledge of what to work with aluminium and steel and to to, to put them back together. Yeah. So he shipped the chassis and the body to ourselves. We did the body and the chassis for him and then sent it back to South Australia. Right. He painted the chassis in yeah. South Australia, sent it back to us and we fitted suspension, engine, gearbox and turned into a rolling chassis. Yeah. Uh, went back to him. He fitted the outer body panels, then we he then also painted the outside of the car because he could do the paint work. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Then he sent it back and we've finished off putting the bright work on the car, getting the interior done, and now we'll do the final commission on the car for sure. him as well. So in, right. within a couple of weeks, he should, he should be getting that one back. Yeah. And then it'll go to South Australia. So It's done uh, some miles back and forth. Yeah, yeah, on, on, on the trailer, <laughs> it's on a couple of cars. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's another stunner though, isn't it? Sorry, he, paint work was done? By himself. By himself, right, yeah. yeah. As I say, he has his own panel shop. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what have we got So here? we've got uh, total restoration to the TR3. Um, it is an early TR3, and there's not that many that were actually built. Um, in some respects, the, the the car that the customer brought to us was the worst car we've ever seen. Oh, really? But he had a, an emotional link to the car and that's why I decided to restore it. And in my office I've got a picture of his father driving the TR3s at Fisherman's Bend as they come off the production line. Uh -huh. So he was sort of, you know, rattle and squeak, most probably test driving, everything works. And his dad will have sat in this car, but we, that, that's the only link to it, and yeah. that's why I decided right. we needed to do it. So these, these were classified as, they, these came from, uh, from the UK as a knockdown kit, yeah. and then they were built, you know, 
um, uh -huh. to, to get the, uh, the workforce going again in Australia sure. after the war and what have you. Was it a popular car in Australia, the TRs? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. well, worldwide they well, sold extremely sure. well. Yeah, certainly yeah. America, they were, yeah. 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 What sort of variations Modifications would have been made to this uh, over uh, a car British. that was sold in Britain? Was, it, was there anything done to it? No, so not really. They were the same. They were just came in the box of parts yeah. and then put together. And what sort of reputation would they have had back in... You weren't around, obviously, there. <laughs> oh, the Triumph have always been a big, a good seller, you know, yeah. worldwide. But obviously, you know, for the um, Australian roads at the time and whatever, this was designed for British back roads well, have been... people just wanted cars uh, you know people had got good jobs they had money to spend and they all wanted different cars yeah. you, you know so you know not everybody wanted a holden no and people would have preferred for argument's sake to have maybe bought an austin healey or a jaguar but okay so what to uh, be what had been done, uh, yeah. new because front bulkhead so complete, it was so yeah, everything in that yeah. area, yeah. Right. new inner front wheel yeah. arches, floors, sills, door skins, um, repaired the front guards, rear guards. And you say about new, as in newly built here? or, or, or No, I bought, a, I bought a bulkhead out of Europe, um, brand new, they're manufactured over there. And As then, in what, ma manufactured recently or was it OEM? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, oh, maybe right. what, I bought that maybe oh, 18 months ago. So it might have been mm -hmm. just pre-Covid I got it. So, so there's manufacturers, there's aftermarket uh, manufacturers uh, dedicated to... Yeah, where to... we buy the, the spare parts for all these cars, you know, yeah. so we can restore them. Um, you know, there's places in the UK and America that you can buy parts for Austin Healey, Triumph, yeah. you know, and all the other sports cars. Yeah. You've just got to find out where where all these people are. Yeah, sure. And is it like small batch sort of engineering firms that are knocking this sort of stuff out? No, no, out? these are big companies. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because worldwide, there's still millions of, oh, not millions, but, you know, hundreds of uh, Triumphs still on the road, which yeah. still need regular maintenance as yeah. they go along. People okay. are still restoring the cars. There's lots of hobbyists doing all these things worldwide. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, that's another cracker. That's it for this time and we still haven't had a look around the repair side of the business where the variety of cars that the team works on is as remarkable as over on the restoration side. Be assured, I'll be back. <laughs>